Hello, hello, hello. So, sorry for not uploading that often. As you can see, I moved. And from now on, the video should come in in a regular pace. And uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. No promises, though. Uh, so, for this video, what I want to show you is how to spiralize or how to create a spiralized contour around any kind of a cylindrical form. So, you know, like a form that you see spinning here on the screen. And you will not need any uh, 3D modeling experience for this. It's all going to be done in Grasshopper. As per usual, I have my Grasshopper script here up and running just in case I forget something. And so that everything goes smoothly. And this spiralized contour we will be able to use it for custom printing, right? For clay printing, for instance, and so on, together with, uh, what's the plugin name? The Silkworm plugin. So without any further ado, let's close this off. There we go. Just use the ugly shaded view and let's get started. So I'm going to disable all of this and we'll start from scratch. By the way, for those who just want to kind of copy it without actually listening to me, here's the full script. Make a print screen, you can just copy it. Or, 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 if you support the channel on Patreon, you get the whole damn script for free. Well, technically free. So, check out the link in the video description. Anyway, let's, let's begin. So, for a cylindrical shape, <clears throat> I want to kind of create a cylindrical shape that would uh, be a little bit bumpy and a little bit random. And the way we do it in Grasshopper is by kind of moving points around, right? So creating a cylindrical shape and then moving its points around. And I want to make it... Um, I want to create the randomness at two separate frequencies. So large bumps and then smaller bumps on top of the large bumps if that makes any sense. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'll create a cylinder that has large bumps on it. I guess we can start, let's start with a point, right? So I'm going to construct point. I'm going to construct a single point, right? As you, as you can see, it asks me for three inputs, X, Y, Z. And by default, those inputs are 0, 0, 0, right? So it just makes a point at 0, 0, 0 coordinates. And I should do this by focals. There we go. So if I give it two numbers into the Z, it's going to make two points, right? If I give it like five numbers, it's going to make five points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it series of numbers right and i'm just going to plug in the series into the z and since series just counts from zero until nine right at uh, every one unit increment it's going to give me 10 points in total because you know zero one two three four five and blah 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 so for each of them it gives me a point great now i'm just going to check uh the values so if i were to change 0 0.4 if I were to change the height, for instance, the step size, right, of each count, you can see that it shrinks, right? So I can kind of expand or contract my point row. Then on each of these points, I can create a circle, PNR, a circle for each of these points, right? And for the circle, just to keep it clear, I will use a radius of one, something like this. And maybe this needs to be squished a little bit more, something like that, All right? So uh, for each point, we create a circle with radius of one. Then I'm going to divide up each of the circles, divide curve, uh, and I will create like I should create more than 10. Uh, let's check. I will create 25 points on each of the curves, right? So a bunch of them. <clears throat> so initially what we are 
creating right now, and I'm hiding everything except for the, the divide curve output. What we're creating right now is a kind of grid of points from which we're going to create the initial cylinder. The problem right now is that, well, it's a very regular cylinder, right? And I talked about us wanting to create like a bumpy one. So how do we do that? Well, if I were to just move these points, each of these points, uh, let's let's draw. So if I have, you know, point, 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 right? If And if I move these points outwards by a random number, each point gets a random number, right? Then the output is going to be a cross section that is irregular, that is a little bit more random, right? And if each cross section is random, the cylinder is going to be just blobby, bumpy, right? So I'm going to move the points. That's the easy part. But the question is with what, right? What's the direction? The way we get the direction is through the tangent vector. And I can show you the tangents by just creating vector display and just showing you the vectors like that. Those are the tangent vectors on the curve, right? And if we take these tangent vectors and we rotate vector, where is it? Rotate vector, vector rotate. Uh, rotate, there it is. Rotate a vector around an axis. We're using this one. If we rotate this vector around the z axis, right, around uh, something that's vertical, with an angle of minus 90 degrees, so first of all, degrees, right? Here it's waiting for radians. I hate radians, so we right click on the A input and we choose degrees right here. And then minus 90, the easiest way to get it is just slash slash minus 90, enter. Like that. And connect it like that. Then if I check this vector, you can see that it's looking outwards perfectly. That's that's what we want. Right, so this is going to be the the vector with which we will move the points outwards. Okay, so that is done, but now we need each of these vectors to have a different kind of a uh, what's the word uh, amplitude, a different amplitude, right? A different strength. Uh, so first of all, we will use the command called amplitude here and for the amplitude itself we will use a random number random right but the question is how and i'm going to check this a little bit yeah okay um the, the question is how uh, are we constructing random numbers for each of these points right because we need multiple right so first of all how many how many of them do we need? Well, we need 25, right? For each of the vectors, because on each of the curves, we will have 25 points, right? So for each of the points, we need a random uh, vector amplitude. So I'm going to connect 25. And actually, let me just create a panel just to show you. Like that. Right. Then, uh, so so we have like twenty five random random numbers. The problem is that they go, uh, they will always go between zero and one, and we might want to be able to um, kind of control how strong the range or not the range the the, the random uh, amplitude is, how high it can go. Right, so I'm going to create a slider saying uh, 0 0.750 just to get a slider that goes between 0 and 1 and connect it there. So now the maximum of how high the points can reach or the, the values can reach is 0 0.7, uh, 703, right? Then 
last thing is we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten um, curves in total right here. So the, the question is, how do we create a brand uh, like for, for each of the curves, for each of the circles, how do we create a rand a new random uh, number generation? Right. So that they don't all expand in the same way. So for that, I will need to play around with the seed. And the way we do it is by using seed. Uh, no, what, what am I saying? We, we're going to use series, series of numbers. So for each seed, we will use a different number and we need to, well, I can just straight up connect it like so. And we need the count to match how many um, how many circles I have here, right? So the count can match by um, the count can match by just uh, taking in how many numbers in series I have here, right? Because here I have ten numbers, so I can just match it to the count like this blam okay let's see if this is gonna work so i'm going to connect this to my amplitude and connect that to my uh translation vector and here it seems like something went wrong um because the bottom two uh, rows did not move while the top row moved too much so my guess is that the addresses for the data streams for the random and the rotate are not matching so i'm going to right click on the v output of rotate and simplify as well as the output of the random and simplify that 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 didn't help oh sorry Oh, that, that's me being stupid. <laughs> that's, that's my bad. Um, here, the count is not actually the, um, the amount of how many, how many circles we get, but rather the, each of the numbers from the series. That's very bad to do. So instead, we will do list length. We'll do list length measure the length of this list you know how long it is and connect that to the series input oh that's me being so stupid so we connect it like that list length connects to series and connects to here now it works sorry about that anyway now once i hide the divide curve my moved points are kind of randomly scattered right but not really because we kept the data tree structure right so since we kept the data tree structure i can still do for instance i can do interpolate curve or just interpolate connect my move to the interpolate like that and i get this kind of a nice little output right so i get a curve for each set of points and then i can of course loft between them just like that well wait not not like that because right now they are in separate branches so i do need to flatten it and now i can loft you know to force them into one branch um one little problem is this gap right here <clears throat> that we need to fix so this gap can be fixed by just making sure that uh interpolate um is set to periodic for interpolate is set to true so that it closes in on, on its <clears throat> on itself wait i need to drink good so i'm just going to create a toggle connect that to the periodic input here and choose it to be true and now we have a blobby blobby boy let's hide everything let's make this a little bit less aggressive yay so now what we can control is how many points we have here 
right? Uh, we can control how high it is. And if you want to, you can control also how many circles it's made out of. Right, so you can kind of squish it with more circles. But in this case, I'm just going to have it something like that. I think that's fine. All right. So next up, once uh, this is done, we want to convert this into a mesh, right? Because then now we will do the next step of doing the micro scale uh, bumps. So smaller bumps on top of the big ones. So to convert this into a mesh, this is literally a single surface, right? So we will use surface to mesh or mesh surface like that. Connect it like so, hide this. And you can see the mesh doesn't look that great. And the reason why it doesn't look that great, if I go to display, preview mesh edges, you can see that the resolution is very low. So I need to increase the resolution. Let me check what I used here. I used 100. Okay, so let's do 100 by 100. And now it's fine, right? So we are creating a grid of points of 100 by 100. Okay, so each of these points needs to be moved out in a random fashion, right? So we want to create a random shimmering right uh, they need to be moved out randomly so again from the mesh i will just deconstruct mesh i'll deconstruct it so that i get my vertices so the points and i get the normals the normals are basically the vectors that are sticking out uh, let me show you vector display from the vertices the normals Ooh problem you can see that they are indeed sticking out but rather they're sticking in it's looking inwards so our little mesh right here is inside out not to worry the loft that we get we can flip surface so we can flip the loft inside out and then the mesh will get flipped inside out and we get our directions outwards like that solved <laughs> it is solved okay now when we have this i will be able to just take the vertices and move them with this uh, along these normal vectors with a certain amplitude and the amplitude is going to be um random random value right random value how many random values? Well, that's as many as the vertices or the normal vectors that we have. So I'm just going to measure the list length, connect the normals, and connect that to my uh, number of random values to generate, like that. Okay, almost there. And then for the random range, I kind of want to just check out here. I used a very small number. We are going to use this very small number as well. 0 0.125, let's say. Connect that to the random R input, like this. So now these are our vectors that are random, have random strength for each of the point. And we will, we will move, I just deleted the vector display, by the way. We will move each point with those vectors, like that, perfect, and now we will reconstruct the mesh, construct mesh from the new points, the new mo newly moved points, with the face information that we had, so this face information from here just connects to the new face information right there, and there we go, so it's all uh, let me also hide some stuff. So it's all crumpled now, as you can see. Right? It's all a little bit messed up. And also I noticed that the seam here is uh, apparent, right? So we, we, we do see that the seam is misaligned. And I think we can fix that. 
by creating a weld between the mesh surface and the deconstruct mesh because we want we don't want two points in here where the seam is for the cylinder rather we want one point for each meeting right so i'm just going to i think i used viewer bird right yeah so i'm going to go to viewer bird it's under extract viewer birds join meshes and weld this bad boy right here connect connect like that and for weld i will toggle to true like that hmm. strange that it doesn't work why don't you work okay what if we align or could it be could it be that we need to also align the vertices just to make sure that they kind of connect yeah Okay, my bad. So we needed to align the vertices to force them into one and then we weld them and then it works. I don't know why it worked for me without aligning. Anyway, doesn't matter. Now now it works. Now it's all set. So we have a bumpy uh, a bumpy mesh. It's a little bit too bumpy uh, or not too bumpy but too spiky. So I'm going to subdivide it with Catmull Clark subdivision. Catmull Clark, like that. And I'm just going to give it level 2, just to make it a little bit nicer. Disable that. And you can see, uh, well, you can't really see it. Let's go for Arctic View. Uh, let's not render this. Instead, let's do a custom preview. Show it to you like that you can see the pattern that we have created so now if i increase the range for instance you can see it becoming stronger or weaker also it seems like it's going inwards hmm Perhaps we don't need to flip the surface anymore. Okay, sure. Or we can just do a negative here. Apparently aligning vertices flips the mesh either way. So I'm just going to use a negative value for the random. Like that. Yeah, so now it goes outwards. So you can get a pretty fantastic shape with this just going to keep it as it is right now um, and then let's continue so we are currently at the stage where we can say that okay this is the cylindrical shape that we want to spiralize and now the real kind of tutorial starts <laughs> only now only now so the first thing that i want to do is when, when, when starting this is I want to create um, a set of points that go along a spiral upwards on the surface of this mesh. And there's multiple ways of how to do it, but the one that I chose is going to use a, a thing that's called a mesh ray intersection. Mesh ray. So our mesh is the viewer birds, uh, you know, smoothed out mesh. And the second two, pl uh, not plugins, uh, inputs are the point from which the ray starts, you know, like a laser beam from which it starts and the direction in which it's heading. So what we want to do is we want to um, create a lot of points along the z-axis just like we did right at the start of this tutorial right here 
So we want to create a lot of points, right? Uh, construct point with a series attached to the Z axis. And let's go to wireframe view without the custom preview like that. And also I'm going to go to display and turn off the mesh edges preview so that it's kind of easier to see like that. And we want to start the spiralization, not from the 0, 0, 0, but from sl somewhere slightly higher up so that it's not hitting, you know, the, the ugly bits, so to say, of the bottom side of the geometry. So I'm going to start it from 0 0.085, if I remember correctly, something like that. So you can see that the point was moved up ever so slightly. Then... Uh, the step size and the, uh, the, the the count, we need to kind of parameterize this. So let's say our whole um, height of this structure is four millimeters right now, or four units. You know, one, two, three, four. That I can see that from the grid. So let's say we are controlling it through the or let's do 4.00. We're controlling it through this slider, right? And our amount of points that we want here in, in those four millimeters is going to be, I don't know, 10,000. Or is it 100,000? 100,000. My apologies. 100,000 points, right? So the question is, if we have 100,000 points, uh, what and we need to fill it with four mil we need to fill a four millimeter height with that what's the step size between them right so that's four millimeters divided by hundred thousand points that's the step size and at that point I'm creating like a parameterized version of this where I can move these points down right so I'm, I'm controlling how high they go so that's neat. Once that is done, we have our starting points, which I can just straight up connect to the point, restart re point position or input. And then for the direction. So each point needs a direction. And let's say we start with, uh, oops, we start with X, unit X. So it starts in X direction, right? Like so. And then for each step, the vector, the direction will need to rotate. Rotate vector. So we're rotating the unit X around what? Around Z axis, right? So it's rotating clockwise around Z axis. And what's the angle? Well, for each of the points, we need 100,000 angles, right? So I'm going to say, wait, how did, we, did I do it? 360, yeah. Wait, that's that's weird. Upper count. Oh yeah, sorry. So if if I say that I'm going to count the amount of turns that I that it makes, right? So a full turn is 360 degrees, right? And I want it to turn the spiral to go around 400 times, right? So how many degrees in total is it going to make? Well, we multiply 360 times 400 times. And in total, it's going to make 144,000 degree turn, right? The spiral, I mean. And then, okay, so for each point, how much does it need to turn? Well, we need to divide the 144,000 by, so I divide by 100,000, just like that. And I know that each point will need to turn 1.4 degrees, or each vector, rather, right? And that is going to be like the step size. So I do need series of numbers again. This whole tutorial is just series of numbers. <laughs> series of numbers. 
where I start from zero, so the starting rotation is zero, my step size is 1.44 degrees, and I rotate it 100,000 times, right? And that is my final kind of degree output. So I need to right click on the rotate angle input and choose degrees here, and then connect my series. So I eventually get my 100,000 100, vectors that I will connect to the D input here for direction. Voila. Let's take a look at the points. Well, it's, it's really hard to say if, if this works or not, because we kind of need to create a line through them to actually see it. So I'm going to do exactly that. Uh, not polyline. Let's do a NURBS curve. NURBS curve through the points. I hide it all. Voila. We have ourselves a spiral. As easy as, as, easy as that. So this is the moment where kind of you, you have the spiralization script right fully, fully working and you can control you know how many how many points it's gonna have the resolution and so on so if it doesn't have enough points then you can see what happens right so we do need a lot hundred thousand if it doesn't make enough turns let's say one you know it's just gonna be that i it even kind of looks crashy oh no never mind it doesn't crash it's, it's just a mess a complete mess so let's do at least five turns, right? Something like that. Um, back to 400 and, and so on. So, so you have a bunch of different ways of how you can change it. But in the, like in the end, uh, we do have ourselves a spiralized contour. So now uh, how do we make it pretty? Well, the, the first thing is um, the preview of the curves, right? So we can do, <clears throat> apologies, human plugin, foodforino.com, by the way, human plugin has um, under display custom preview line weights option, where you can connect the curve to custom preview. You can choose the shader. So I'm just going to, I, I think you can just do a color swatch for the shader color swatch. I'm going to make it black, connect it like that. And then for the thickness, you can actually, you can choose it to be either absolute or um, screen based, right? So right now it's screen based. So it, it changes uh, thickness if we zoom in or zoom out. But if I toggle, toggle this to true, it shouldn't it still does though um this is awkward shouldn't oh maybe we need to give it an actual thickness for it to work what did we use here 0 0.006 let's try that 0 0.006 bam gets thicker still changes with with zooming in and zooming out not not sure what's up with that maybe it should but either way, we can control the thickness now, right? If I increase this or decrease it, it becomes thicker or thinner. Okay, but that's not enough. We want to block out the backside of the preview so that it's not in the way. And also, I'm going to show you how uh, you can really easily set it up with uh, Silkworm in just a second, but I want to make it pretty first. Um, so we need to block out the what's the word that I'm looking for the the back side of the curves right so that we only see the front side and to do that uh, you, you can kind of create um, a NURBS surface on top right and then you can cap it and maybe we should do it uh sure let, let, let's do it okay so to do that we kind of need to start with um taking the points 
that we uh, sorry that that we have here the grid of points and uh, realizing that oh we have a, a little bit of a problem here and the problem is called um we have everything in the same list for creating a surface this will not fly and we do need to create a surface so if i were to um just t try to create a uh, su surface from points surface from points right now and just use these points to create a surface it's not going to you know and i know that i used 100 by 100 uh, from here like that oh it actually worked oh no no ne never mind it didn't work oh thank god <laughs> i was scared there for a second um so you, you can see that it's not um not working properly right there is this kind of a huge zigzag that goes through not zigzag but a seam that goes through it all so that that doesn't work so instead uh, what i do is i partition um rather sorry to, to explain it better I, I i really want to explain it as as well as i possibly can so that zigzag right here that seam that goes through is basically it not realizing that it needs to close into itself onto itself right so we need to somehow close it and the way we can do it is if we take all of the points and we partition them partition the list with uh into the 100 by 100 by 100 you know point clouds point clusters like that so i'm just connecting the 100 by 100 into the size of the chunks the output that we get is a hundred a hundred and one branches with a hundred points in each branch and those hundred points are basically the rows or not rows like horizontal rows of points right so each of them are now separated into each branch okay so we have that what about it well now to actually stitch it together and delete that to stitch it together i need to take with list item i need to take the first item in the list and place it i believe place it to the end of the list itself i know it makes no sense but um how do if i were to create a line <laughs> god damn it polyline through the points that i have right now you can see that these are not meeting right because it ends at the end point as it should but it should end at the start point right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the start point and add it to the end of the list so that when it con finishes here it also just makes one last step to the start point right so i'll use merge and i'll connect the list and the endpoint here and now if i use the pole line bam they are connecting got it hope you did then i connect this to surface from points like that and i believe we should use plus one right at this point so if i connect my 100 slider to my u input of surface from points it's gonna complain and that's reasonable because we just added one more point to each list right so i'm going to right click on the u input and choose expression and choose here x plus one so that it kind of gets or wait why are you complaining now double checking oh yeah yeah this needs to be flattened I, I i completely forgot so this doesn't want the data branch it wants a single list so we will flatten this bam and now we get the the nice little seam here with a few hiccups but don't worry that's fine and hide everything and we get ourselves a surface right so here we had the mesh and here we have a surface 
Then for this surface, I want to cut away the top and the bottom. And I want to cut away them according to where my spiral starts and where it ends. So how do I do that? Well, if I just simply, <clears throat> if I just simply uh, check out these points, 100,000 points, and I get, I take out with list item again, if I take out the first item of the list, you know, the bottom point, and the uh, last item of the list, oops, you click here, last item of the list, the top point, and I create a XY plane on each of them, like that and like that, right? So we have two XY planes. Then I can force an intersection between the surface and the XY plane. Uh, surf uh, or was it brep brep plane uh, okay let's oh there there it is actually brep plane so we we do that and we force an intersection between them so that we get a curve or actually two curves so let me flatten this out so that both of them are in the same list and then i'll use um trim no surface split surface split command where i will split the surface with the curves just like that so that we get uh three separate surfaces and let me remember yeah we we can kind of do it that way i guess so we could measure the area of these surfaces but it's going to be very heavy on the computer i think wait let's check area Hope it's not gonna crash. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very heavy. Uh, so we are not doing that. Instead, uh, let's just measure the longest edge, I guess, or rather, not the longest edge, but the mm, perimeter. So, so the the surface that has the longest perimeter is going to be our biggest surface. That that also works, huh? So, if I do brep edges, and I get all of the external or naked edges, and I join them up, just like that. Why are they not joining properly? Okay, sure, let's not join them. Instead, let's measure the distance of them, or length. Uh, which one do we use? Um, length, this one. There we go. We measure the length of them. We mass addition. We add up the lengths for each of the surfaces and we get the result. So I'm going to flatten out the, the, the result to get it all into one list. And you can see, you know, three separate uh, or, or four separate lengths for some reason. Why the hell is it four? No matter, no matter. We have four, sure. Um, and I'm going to sort the lengths. And together with the lengths, I'm going to sur sort the surfaces, just like that. So the surface that is in the top is going to be the one that has the smallest perimeter. I don't want that, I want it opposite, right? So I'm going to right click on the A output here and choose to reverse. So now the surface that is at the top has the largest perimeter. And with that, I will use list item, which automatically gives me the, nope, wrong one, list item, uh, which automatically gives me the first item in the list. And that is wrong. <laughs> that, that actually doesn't work. God damn it. Okay, double checking interior. Oh, my bad. We could just use, instead of exterior, why am I using exterior? I'm being stupid, I'm sorry. We will be using interior edges. I, I don't know what's, what's gotten into me today. And now it, it all works, right? That's because the exterior, sometimes the perimeter is not, it, it's just going to be 
um, since for instance here the perimeter is so fluctuating of course the perimeter here is going to be larger than the perimeter here that's just a given um, so that was a whoopsie but anyway right now we do have a clipped off uh, surface with the top and the bottom cut away right which means we can just simply cap it to make it work no we can't we can't cap the bottom and that's because the bottom starts um, from from an area where we still have some area some part probably this part where the geometry still bends so I'm just going to increase the number of where we start to 0.095 hmm? 0.105 something like that and there we go now it caps so you know you just needed a little bit of convincing to do <laughs> to, to make it cap okay so now we have that We're, this is this is capped and i'm just going to i believe just create a material for this for the cap cap holes uh component so custom preview like that um and for this i will use a swatch uh, not not a swatch sorry um custom material create material like that and i will use emission so for emission i will call it swatch and i, I will make it white and the reason why we use emission is because if we go for rendered view it's going to be pure white and that is what we want, right? Because when we turn on the line weights, they're going to kind of pop on top of the pure white. And as you can see, we have a little bit of a, of a problem here. And that's the intersection between the lines. They are on the same, same plane, right? Or same surface. So the intersection between the lines and the mesh is kind of screwing us over. Uh, so what we can do is we can just this Catmull Clark mesh before we cast rays on it we can use offset mesh on it offset mesh I think this is from Pufferfish by the way and with a very small distance let me check what distance I used I used like negative 0 0.001 or 0 0.01 0 0.01 like that and we use negative because the mesh was inside out and then we just connect that to our mesh ray wait that didn't help at all let's let's play around with the slider see if that changes anything that doesn't seem to change anything Let's try a bigger number, one, two, five. Hmm. Oh, again, I'm being stupid. Offset mesh by default creates a solid mesh, so it's like double skinned. So it will not influence anything unless you go in here and where it says create solid, you turn it off. Toggle, Boolean toggle, and you set it to false. And now it's gonna, gonna work like a charm. So let's delete that, 0 0.01, connect that, now it's gonna be fine. There we go yeah okay that works so we have ourselves a blob that is spiralized hurrah okay second part of the tutorial then last part five minutes maximum we have a curve a spiralized curve we want to convert it into a g code for printing how do we do that? Well, 
we first of all actually i'm going to actually bake it out into rhino just like that and i will create a bounding box for it and i'll scale the bounding box together with the curve inside of it according to the any height that i think would be nice so between these points i want let's say 200 millimeters something like that so it's it becomes a little bit bigger right like that and i move it move it move it there we go so we have um, one long ass curve so that curve i will reference back in into grasshopper and i will say mm, let's divide the curve according to length you know so that each segment has a certain length to it and the length is basically the resolution of the steps so i'm going to say uh, one millimeter sure bam i get 204 points right and through those points i'm going to create a polyline and i'm doing this because any 3d printer doesn't there, there are no 3d printers that understand curves they only understand small you know line straight line segments like moving from one point to the other so we have a polyline and i'm going to explode the polyline into separate segments just like that so now these are separate you know 204,914 straight line curves and from here on out <clears throat> i'm going to use a plugin that's called silkworm silkworm 2 actually so here for this plugin i am going to use the silkworm compiler this is the brain of it uh, which spits out the g code it's going to give me a movement what it's going to ask me for movements so i'm going to give it to him uh, silkworm movement delimiter not that uh, silkworm extrusion path that so we're going to use that and i'm just going to straight up connect movements to movements like that and it's going to ask me for four inputs to be able to print something lines speed flow ratio and the limiter the limiter is basically a non-printing move where you just want it to what does it do at the start and at the end of the printing don't care about that not a tutorial about that what we care about is the lines and the speed and the flow ratio so for the lines we already have the segments straight up connect segments to lines like that then for the speed who knows depends on what you're printing with if it's clay then it's you know i don't know how fast you print clay 15 millimeters per second something like that here it's in uh, millimeters per minute so you need to check so it all depends on your hardware right but for the speed let's say 15 millimeters per oh this is per minute so 15 uh, times 15 millimeters per second so 15 times 60 is the speed right and then for flow ratio uh, cross-sectional area component uh, square millimeters millimeters um, is that the flow here yes that is the flow and here you kind of describe you can do this here you kind of describe the nozzle width you know so what what you're printing with if it's clay it's probably not going to be 0 0.4 it's probably going to be something like three millimeters then you have come on layer height so for the layer height the best way to do it is if you just kind of measure the distance like that 0 0.893 millimeters and just plug it in like right here come 
come on then you have filament diameter this one will not help <laughs> not, not that much <laughs> so we will kind of keep it as as it is um this is as you can see used for printers uh for sorry plastic printers if you're printing with clay you might want the flow ratio to be able to adjust the flow ratio by yourselves right so you will you would use your own number for this so filament diameter i don't know i'll use the three millimeters as well no idea and multiplier this is uh, when you test the print if it's printing you know if it's not extruding enough or if it's extruding too much you can you know do like okay 50 percent or two oops or 200 percent right so so you just uh, connect any kind of multiplier here what's the flow that we get 0.467 I, I don't know if that's a good number or not what matters is that the g code does indeed does get generated so how do you get it out from the compiler well you do that with a panel you connect the g code to the panel and then give it a second it's gonna gonna write all of the lines you right click and you choose to stream stream destination right choose that and here you're just going to say uh, my favorite spiral no no let's do like and subscribe that's with a b <laughs> right um dot g code don't forget that add dot g code hit save and keep in mind that since you're streaming this now every time when you'll change something any any value anything here if you right click here and choose to stream contents it's going to update the g-code file that i have just created in the on the desktop you know so your file is going to be updated and then one last thing to kind of do let me just open up one little one little cool website here just give me a second there we go there it is <clears throat> this is a G code viewer website. It's a pretty cool one as well. Uh, G, not G, J, herm.com with double R, herm.com, G code viewer slash G code viewer. Um, what you can do with it is let me minimize that, maximize this. You can drag in any kind of g-code and look how it's going to be printed so here it's it's kind of showing the uh, how an octopus is going to be printed we don't care about that where is our g-code that's that i have literally just made oh no yeah let's do that again this is awkward stream destination desktop like and subscribe yeah yeah save stream contents minimize oh there it is like and subscribe g code and we just drag and drop it in wait a bit and here it goes Here it goes, drawing the spiral. So at least we know that the movements translate properly, right? And the G-code viewer is indeed, I'm just kind of scrubbing through it, but the G-code viewer is indeed kind of catching all of the all of the movements properly, right? And I understand what's going on. And also I just crashed it because it had too many lines. So the Java here it can't, can't, can't keep up, uh, but it does work, it does work. You can also see the green line here and that is the initial movement be before it starts printing and the initial movement will always always start from zero 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 coordinate from right here 
right? So make sure that your curves are always placed in the positive in X and Y, because that is where your build plate is, right? And this is the home position. Zero, zero, zero is the home position. Keep that in mind. And with that said, wait, wait, let's, let's make it pretty, make it pretty important, important, important Arctic render, please wait, no, not Arctic, sorry, uh, the, the, the rendered view, there we go that point that yay with that said thank you thank you for watching this again the file is available for patreon supporters consider please consider if you can't support it um then please consider subscribing or pressing the like button that really helps out and yeah enough with me selling out <laughs> i'll see you in the next one later